Good morning everyone, I am Dr. Srinivas Chilakori, Senior Consultant at Apollo Proton Cancer Center. We are observing World Head Neck Cancer Awareness Month in the month of April and this is an opportunity for us to be uh, knowledgeable about this disease, aware, spread the awareness as well as reiterate our commitment to control this disease. Head neck cancers as probably some of you may know is one of the most common cancers in India the second most common cancer in India in fact and we see a huge burden of mortality because of head neck cancers primarily head neck cancers are due to two major risk factors alcohol and tobacco alcohol and tobacco are the reasons for almost 75 percent which is three-fourth of all head neck cancers in our country and just simply by tobacco cessation and alcohol limiting alcohol intake we can significantly reduce the burden of head neck cancers. Apart from these two factors, which is tobacco and alcohol, human papilloma virus infection is the third most common risk factor for head neck cancers. Apart from these top three, the other risk factors are other viral infections such as Epstein-Barr virus, some uh, chemical carcinogens which are more of an occupational hazard and other minor risk factors. So, Together, all of these constitute the major risk factors for head and neck cancers. What do you do to detect them early or to prevent them? The best thing you can do is to avoid tobacco usage. Tobacco usage in any form, any form is a risk factor for head and neck cancers. In fact, tobacco chewing is a bigger and uh, faster uh, way to develop head neck cancers. So there is an analogy like in head and neck cancers that if uh, alcohol is like a test match where you need to have uh, a long history of alcohol intake for head and neck cancers to develop, you can be a smoker it's like a one day match, uh, one day cricket match wherein you can have cancers after a, uh, a brief period of time but tobacco usage, especially tobacco chewing, is like a 2020 match where you can have a risk for developing head neck cancers very, very early into the usage. So even less than five years of tobacco uh, chewing can put you at a higher risk for head neck cancers. So I think tobacco cessation, I think the biggest message uh, which anyone can give you is that tobacco cessation is an essential way to avoid head neck cancers. Now if one is at a risk for developing head neck cancers, what should one do? So especially in high risk individuals who have a higher risk or a higher tendency to develop head neck cancers, typically we advise screening. Screening involves oral examination. Majority of the times oral cavity cancers which are in the mouth or in the tongue or in the cheek or on the gums or on the lips these cancers can be picked up by visual examination or visual inspection. This can be done either by a doctor or by the person himself or herself uh, just by uh, looking at uh, looking there uh, looking or examining their oral cavity in, in front of a mirror. Or if they have any suspicion there is an ulcer, there is a bleeding, there is an alteration, the taste, voice, difficulty or pain while swallowing bleeding from mouth or nasal cavity these are the signs common signs or symptoms for uh, head neck cancers and they they can immediately uh, uh, get a medical attention to get them self detected from head neck cancers head neck cancers as you can see in this uh, slide on the in the picture uh, has multiple areas at risk this is the oral cavity which constitutes the tongue the salivary glands, the cheek, the mandible and the maxilla, the bones, the jaws, upper and lower jaw, the lips and the tongue. These are the most common areas where oral cavity cancer can arise which is the most common head and neck cancers in India. Apart from this, the pharynx, the upper portion of the neck uh, is also a significantly uh, um, uh, area which can develop head neck cancers apart from this larynx which is your voice box area and below it and the hypopharynx which 
uh, is also involved very commonly in India with is affected with cancers. Apart from these oral cavity, pharynx, larynx and hypopharynx, there are areas such as nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses which are areas behind the nose which can affect, get affected with uh, uh, head and neck cancers and e even including the nasopharynx. So, so these are the most common sites of head and neck cancers and the typical signs and symptoms which we see in head and neck cancers is as I already mentioned uh, bleeding from any site, ulcer, loss of taste, change in voice, difficulty in swallowing etc or lump in the neck sometimes is also a sign of head neck cancers. So I have discussed with you regarding the symptoms, what do we, uh, what are the risk factors, how do we screen. Now I will talk to you briefly about how do we treat head neck cancers. Patients of head neck cancers require uh, either surgery or radiation therapy. These are the two most common forms of treatment available for head neck cancers. Most of the patients who have a bit of an advanced disease also require chemotherapy in addition to surgery and radiation. And some patients do require all three, such as patients of locally advanced head and neck cancers where the patients have to undergo surgery followed by radiation combined with chemotherapy. There are many advances in head and neck cancer treatments over the last uh, decade or so and advances in surgery, advances in robotic surgery is one of them. Similarly, in radiation, proton therapy has emerged as one of the major indications for proton therapy. Head neck cancers has emerged, emerged as one of the most common sites where proton therapy could be used. Especially in areas where, uh, in situations where we want to irradiate second time in head neck cancers or give radiation for the second time in head neck cancers, proton therapy has been found to be extremely beneficial and in fact is a standard of care in these patients. Proton therapy can also be used to treat patients of nasopharynx, nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses as well as oropharynx in certain uh, best centers of the world. And pro the biggest benefit or advantage of proton therapy for these patients is avoidance of significant toxicity which conventional radiation therapy techniques are associated with. So with proton therapy, the patient can preserve the function uh, of the normal structures around the tumor and thereby maintain or have improved quality of life compared to the conventional uh, treatment techniques. Apart from this, proton therapy as I mentioned is extremely beneficial in patients who, who who deserve or who require second time radiation. So with this, I hope all of you are aware of it, are spread the, spread the awareness among your family members, among your friends and well-wishers, especially those who consume tobacco and at least advise them regarding the screening and the treatment facilities available. If you have an ulcer in or the change in the color of your uh, oral cavity, please go to medic please uh, go to a doctor or seek medical attention immediately this could be cancer and if you detect it very very early the results are excellent so i wish you all the best and hope that you are uh, knowledgeable bit more regarding this head neck cancers thank you